So one of those completely digital and the other completely real. And what I mean by real is that it's tangibly in my hands and I'm actually playing it. Is this a fair comparison for digital and film photography? Welcome back to my channel. And today we're gonna to be talking about how to take digital photography and make it look more like film. But here's the thing, film, and digital are not the same. In fact, digital photography will never be film photography, and there are a few reasons for that, and I wanna jump into those reasons right at the beginning of this video. All right, so let me open up this box that I've got from my last shipment to Indie Film Lab, and I've got a bunch of negatives right here. At one time, this was this, and this was in this. How film works. Honestly, it's not that complicated. You've got this reel, on this reel, you have a ton of tiny little crystals. When exposed to light, those crystals respond. As light is reflected into the reel, the crystals expose. This is probably a massive oversimplification. <laughs> you kind of pay for the amount of crystals too that is inside this reel. For instance, this box of Portra 400, my go-to favorite film before it got crazy expensive. Now I shoot gold 200. But you'll notice it says world's finest grain at 400 speed. That's because they've got very tiny fine crystals in here. Cheaper disposable cameras are going to have larger crystals that give you a larger grain. So the more expensive and better the film, typically the finer grain. On the other side, the cheaper film has larger grain, it's not as finely tuned, et cetera, et cetera. With digital, there's a lot of forgiveness. With film, what you get is what you get. There are so many pros to shooting digital. It's convenient, it's inexpensive compared to film. We can run and gun, we can go on a trip and come back with thousands of photos. Could you imagine trying to come back home with thousands of photos with a roll? I get 12 shots in this thing. There's something beautiful about film, which is why so many photographers are drawn to it. I mean, I love shooting film. There is a reality to film. It's tangible. Something physical is happening in our hands and inside the chemicals when we get them developed. And no matter what you wanna do with your digital images and how you wanna edit those raw files, they will never be the same because you don't have exploding crystals inside your raw file. Now that said, there are some editing techniques that can push you in the direction of film if you're not a film shooter. And honestly, guys, that's me. I mostly shoot digital, but I love the film look. And when I edit my photos, I want them to have a nod to film. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you 10 photos. Five of these photos are digital. Five of these photos are shot on film. And I want you to figure out which ones are which. So I'm gonna play this reel. I'm gonna give it a few seconds for you to look at it and take it in. And then I'm gonna tell you if it was film or digital. And I'll even show you what the Instagram community thought.
Okay, so how did you do as you went through the film and digital photos? Did they all stand out to you? Or could you see at least the inspiration of the digital photos to look more like the film photos? So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna jump in here and use three different camera systems. I'm gonna show you on the Sony A7 series. I'm gonna show you on the Leica Q2 and the Fujifilm X100V how I get a more film-like look on these RAW files. So let's dive in. Okay, so this one was kind of a favorite. Everybody on my Instagram seemed to think this was film, but really, this is a digital file. So before we go further, let's just go ahead and crop that looks good. And I'm gonna do everything just one-to-one -to -one today as if it's medium format. So I've got this Fuji X100V awesome photo of my van and my surfboard and my friend Jesse's van and his surfboard in Santa Cruz at Pleasure Point right after we were done surfing and before we drove home. Let's start with the tone curve. So we're gonna come down here to the curve and we're gonna put a touch more contrast into the photo in the colors. I like to grab these intersections here and then just pull this one down a touch, push this one up a touch and just make this nice little S curve. And then I'm gonna copy that curve and paste it to the green and blue channels. And now I've got a bit more contrast just in those colors. I'm gonna add those same points to the light curve as well. In film, just as in real life, there is no digital black or digital white. Digital black is like pure nothingness and digital white is completely pure white. It doesn't exist in real life. A printer or a negative cannot give you pure digital black, like the, the, the hex code 0000. God, I hope that was right. Black like that does not exist in real life. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the black up. Do it to where you think it looks good. Just bring that black up. Same thing with white, bring it down. And already the image is a bit softer and we are on our way to a film inspired look. And I'm actually gonna push these curves a little more. Let's get a touch more contrast in here. I'm just gonna copy and paste it to the others. All right, now already I'm gonna do a before and after. I'm already feeling like we're on our way there. For me, I mostly shoot Kodak films, which are known a bit for warmth. And so just for my own personal white balance, I'm gonna warm this photo up a touch. The second thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna come down to color grading and I'm gonna add some warm tones into the shadows. So let's just go like, I don't know, 55. And I'm gonna bring some warmth in. Not a ton, just a little bit. This is more kind of in line with Kodak, so I'm gonna put a little warmth in the shadows. And typically when we color grade that kind of orange and teal that is like the go-to money color grading for everybody, that's a great digital look. But we're gonna actually put a little more purple into our highlights. And so the third thing we're gonna do is put some purple into the highlights. Just a touch, it's gonna put a little purple in it. Maybe right there, let's go with that. So the first thing we did was the tone curve. The second thing we did was we added warmth to the shadows. The third thing we did was we put a little purple into the highlights. Now we're about to have a lot of fun here. Go down to your clarity slider and freaking smoke this thing way down. Let's go to like negative 20. Don't be adding clarity if you're going for a film look. I take it to negative 20, maybe even more. I even sometimes take it to negative 50. Because here's what happens. I'm, I'm gonna really zoom in to show you this. One thing about film, highlights roll really smooth with film. So if you have this super crispy edge like this, it doesn't really look like film. Go the other way. Watch how the roof line gets a little halo around it as I push the highlights down. Look at that, see that halo? Look at the tree line, look at the roof line. So I'm gonna take this actually down to like negative 25. And honestly, it's still a sharp image. It didn't need all that clarity, but by taking the clarity down, I have smoothed these lines out and made this kind of like softer edge, which 
looks more like film. Okay, so we've done the tone curve. We've pushed a little warmth in the shadows. We've put a little purple into the highlights. We have turned the clarity down. And you can also, if you wanna really soften it up, sometimes I take the sharpness just down to 25. The last thing we do is we're gonna add that grain. Here's the thing, we were talking about grain earlier in film. Cheaper, disposable cameras are gonna have a larger grain pattern. More expensive film is going to have a finer grain pattern. So it's really your preference as to what kind of film you wanna do. I typically will put my grain right around 40. Just see what feels good. 25 feels good a lot of times to me, and that's like the default. Uh, and sometimes I'll push it to 50. For this photo, if I push to 50, it starts to look pretty like flat. I don't know if I want that look. I'm gonna actually take keep it at 25. When you add the roughness, what it's doing is it's it's going from like a sandier look to like a more random pattern, which again is indicative of like cheaper film. So if I wanted this to look more disposable, maybe I would push the roughness and the size up. But I'm gonna leave it just at its default setting. And now I have a pretty close photo to the one that I showed earlier, even though this was a brand new edit. But this is in more of that film style. Okay, let's go to this one. This is the crop and the edit I did, but really this is a digital photo that looks like this. It's nice and crooked. I'm gonna straighten it up and hopefully you guys can forgive my shaky hands. Uh, so here we go. There's a one-to-one -one medium format style crop. Let's do the same thing. Let's go down here. I'm gonna put my points in. Okay, I'm gonna pull this down push this up and all, again, all I'm doing here is just adding some contrast in the colors. I'm gonna copy and paste this and now I've got more contrast. I'm gonna come over to the tone curve and I'm gonna add my points here. I'm just gonna pull the highlights down and get them out of pure white. See how the sky completely changes as I pull this down? I don't want pure white and I don't want pure black. So now I have pushed this and faded the blacks. Already, we are in the direction of film again. So, okay, I'm gonna warm it up a little bit because I told you I like warmth in my photos. I'm gonna go down to color grading and I'm gonna add some warmth into the shadows. We are speed editing, so don't judge me too much. I'm gonna put a little purple into those highlights. I may have made this one a little too contrasty, but that's okay. I might pull the contrast down a little bit here. Get those blacks, there we go. I'm liking how this is going. Let's go down to the clarity. I'm gonna pull that clarity down, maybe like, let's you know, say 20. Keep the sharpening where it's at. And then I'm gonna add this grain to it. Now, one thing in the other photo, the, the original photo, is I made the blues much more teal in those shadows. And then I also turned the luminance up. Sometimes I feel like this helps create some of that film glow that we get uh, with highlights in film. So this is definitely not perfect, but you kind of see what I'm going for here. Let me pull up the one I had done before. This is much more finely tuned with a radial around the elk and a gradient at the bottom. But you definitely can see the process I just went through is getting us pretty close to my final edit without the additional things that are on it. That's a Sony file. So I've done a Fuji file, a Sony file, and this is the Leica file. Now this is in Keeler, California. I was just recently there. If I was to pull up the original of this, this is actually really cropped in. It's really cool how far the Q2 can punch in. This is a Leica Q2 file. I'm gonna make it one-to-one. -one. We're gonna punch it in nice and tight and get this guy's little collection of cars over here. And when I do the same thing again, and this time I'm gonna do it even quicker. I'm gonna add two points. I'm gonna copy and paste. And, and sometimes if you want, you can actually use just this to add some of that blue back into the shadows. Dealer's choice. Uh, I've copied and pasted there. I'm gonna lower the contrast a little. I'm gonna increase the shadows so we get really good clarity here. Bring the blacks down a touch. I'm gonna warm up my image as I do. I'm gonna go down to color grading. I'm gonna add a little warmth. 
into those shadows again. Gonna add a little purple into the highlights. Well, not too much though on this one. I'm gonna take that clarity down to negative 20. I'm gonna crank that grain up and let's go cheap with this one. Let's go like a larger grain pattern that's kind of rough. Look how blurry the van looks now before and with that grain. And that honestly is all in the grain. Look at the difference. See how the grains blur in the image and just make it softening the lens. It's, it's making it cheaper looking. So I don't, I don't want it to be that cheap looking. So I'm gonna back these off a touch. Sky, nice and grainy. And again, this is my original one and the one I just did. They're similar except here, I did the same thing. I pushed a little more blue towards teal and saturated it. Maybe brought the luminance up a little bit. So just to recap, the five things you can do to give your photos a bit more of a film look, whether you're on Fuji or Sony or Leica or Canon or Nikon or anything else out there, the same rules apply. Add contrast in your tone curve and then bring down the whites and bring up the blacks because white and black in the digital world don't exist the same way in the physical world. Two, add some warmth to the shadows. Three, add a little purple to your highlights. Four, bring your clarity slider down until you start to see the lines bleed over in the highlights. And then five, add some grain that works for you. And for the style you're going for, if you want more of a expensive film look, keep that grain kind of sandy and fine and small. If you want a more disposable camera look, which definitely has its own style, bring up the size and the roughness a little and you'll start to see it kind of come together, but watch out for distorting the subject in your photo. Okay, I hope this short tutorial was helpful in understanding how digital and film photography differ. And we don't want to try to recreate film photography with a digital camera, but we can definitely give a little nod to it in our editing style. If you like my style of photography, you can see it all day long on my Instagram link below or my website. I have so many galleries you can go through and explore. If you ever message me or leave a comment, I always respond because I wanna build some community here and I'm grateful that you're watching and I'm thankful for all you subscribers for being part of the community. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to hit that button. Give me a like if you thought this video was helpful. And I look forward to making many more and continuing to chase down the fine art of photography, videography, and even get into a little philosophy too. All right, we'll see you next time.